video series will cover unit one, chemistry and measurement. The first video will cover specifically looking at measuring matter. The entire series that we will take a look at will cover the learning objectives of naming numerical prefixes and using the metric in the SI, SI units. We'll take a look at significant figures, calculating significant figures, defining density and specific gravity and doing uh, density calculations, and using the factor label method and dimensional analysis to solve problems. For video one, we will focus on physical quantities or what we will call units. Our understanding of matter depends on our ability to measure changes in physical properties that are associated with physical and chemical reactions or physical and chemical changes. So we're first going to take a look at how we name prefixes and how we use them correctly for the measurement of mass, length, volume. So what is a physical quantity? It is essentially a unit of measurement. We generally use the metric system as a standard of measurement in chemistry. At times, we will use another system called the SI system, but we'll take a look at that in a moment. Looking at this photograph here, we can see a number of different things that can be measured. The height of this person, as we see here, is 1.65 meters. The weight or the mass of this person at 58.2 kilograms or 128 pounds and the mass or the weight of her bag. Weight in pounds and kilograms in mass. Where do you see examples of metric system in, unit, in English units in the world around you? What are some of the things that you use often? Let's say, think about cooking and measuring and that sort of thing. What are units of measurement? We have to be able to describe the mass, the volume, the temperature, and the temperature of uh, substances that we are analyzing in chemistry. Density is another type of unit of measurement, but it is not one single measurement. It is actually the um, it is actually the mass divided by the volume, and it is a compound measurement. It's not a simple measurement that we can use that we can measure using an instrument. So, physical properties such as mass, volume, and temperature are actual quantities, physical quantities that we can actually quantify, meaning that we can measure them. And they are described by a number in a unit. The number gives the value, and then the unit tells us whether we're measuring mass, volume, or temperature, or some other um, unit. Now, the one thing that we say about a quantity is that we cannot really quantify the taste of something. We can't particularly quantify, like put into numbers, what is the color of something and not simply using um, regular laboratory tools, right? So any unit of measurement is based on a physical, measurable physical property. And we have a number and a unit. There are two different units of measurement that we use in chemistry. The main one is the metric system. And then the other one is called the International System of Units. There's a modified version of the metric system. And generally, uh, these are an, an official system that is used throughout the world for various um, units. And we'll take a look at what they are on the next slide. On these videos, you will see links to uh, hyperlinks in the, the presentation. You have these presentations posted for you on Top Hat. When you download them, you are able to access these hyperlinks by clicking on them. What are the units of measurement? So the measurement of length is the meter in both SI and metric system. Notice that lowercase m is the abbreviation for the meter. Volume is measured in liters or cubic meters. Notice that capital L is the abbreviation for the liter. Get used to writing things in capital and lowercase letters because they mean different things when we use them in chemistry. So if you like to write everything in capital letters or you write, like to write everything in lowercase letters, 
make sure that you are able to identify the differences um, and you may be marked wrong on a question if you don't use a capital L for leader or some other thing like that. The mass of a substance is measured in grams in the metric system or the kilogram in the SI system. Temperature is degrees Celsius in the metric system, whereas SI system, it's simply called Kelvin. And even though Kelvin is in a lower case by the name, the symbol is a capital K. And for both the metric system and the SI system, the second is the unit of time. SI and metric units are related. If you notice on the last screen that we saw that they had very, um, most of the thing, most of the units are similar. There are three major differences. The metric of unit of mass is the gram rather than the kilogram in the metric system. The metric unit is a volume is the liter rather than the cubic meter in the metric system. And the metric unit of temperature is the Celsius degree rather than Kelvin's. Notice that the, the difference between the um, cubic, I'm sorry, the uh, kilogram and the gram is that a gram is one one thousandth of a kilogram. And the difference between a liter and a cubic meter is that a liter is one one thousandth of a cubic meter. Units such as density and speed are what we call derived units. They are derived because you first have to measure two separate properties and then put them together. We can't measure density or speed directly. We first have to measure the length, then the time it takes to travel that distance. So we have to first measure distance, and then we divide that by the amount of time it takes for an object to travel that distance, and that gives us the speed. Density is similar in which we first have to measure the mass of a substance and then measure the volume. Density can also be written as grams per milliliter as we'll see in a later video. So these, these types of measurements that we see in a fraction form can be used as what we will call a conversion factor because there's more than one unit at one time and we have two units. We've got grams over seconds. I'm sorry, meters over seconds and grams over a volume. So we can use them as conversion factors. Sometimes there might be a little bit of uh, misunderstanding when thinking of the words mass and weight. Oftentimes you will say in lab, get the weight of this substance, where in actuality or the, the instructions will say weigh five grams of this substance. When in actuality, it should be saying get the mass because mass and weight are two, two different things. The mass is the amount of matter that's in an object, whereas the weight is the amount of gravity that is pulling down on that mass depending on the size of the object. So let's say uh, on the earth, your mass is the same as it would be on the moon because you're made of the same amount of stuff. Whereas your weight would be different because the moon is much smaller. It has much less gravitational force than the earth. So you would weigh much more on the earth. Now let us take a time, take some time to take a look at the various different um, units that we are using for chemistry. Most often you will see things such as mass and mass, our base unit, in metric system, in the metric system is the gram. Our unit in the SI system is the kilogram. So uh, the gram is a much smaller unit than the kilogram. Notice that we have a conversion between one kilogram and 1,000 grams, right? One, one kilogram is equal to 1,000 grams. One kilogram is also equal to 2.2 pounds. So we can convert between the metric system and the English system by using these various conversions. Let me ask you a question. What would you use to measure your own mass? What about the mass of your cell phone? Would they be the same masses? Would we use the same unit? Most likely not. You'd use a kilogram for your body weight or for the mass of your body, excuse me, 
and you would probably use grams for the mass of your cell phone. This is an electrical balance, and it is what we use in the laboratory to measure masses of substances. Notice that on this balance, you can read 5.01 grams. Notice that the unit for mass is grams. What we'll talk about in, an, in another video is the number of significant figures, and it's based on the precision of the instrument. Notice that this instrument can read to two decimal places. That means that this instrument is precise only up to two decimal places. This last digit, if you've been in the lab and you put something on a balance, you'll notice that that last digit flickers often. And it is an uncertain digit. And it is included in our count of significant figures. We'll talk about that in a later video. Here we have the measurement of length. In chemistry, the metric system is the meter and a smaller unit is what we will call the centimeter. Both, both metric and SI systems both use meter as their length. Here we're taking a look at a yardstick versus a meter stick. Notice that the yardstick is measuring in inches and this side is less precise than the opposite side where we can see additional little hash marks that help us to measure um, a substance. Notice that a meter stick is going to measure in centimeters. And these little tiny hashes that we have in between here are millimeters. So there's one meter in 39.4 inches and one meter is 39.4 inches. One of the units that you might want to commit to memory would be the conversion between centimeters and inches. What metric unit do you do you think you would use to measure the length of your hand? How about the length of your cell phone? What about to measure how tall you are? Would those all be the same? You tell me. Volume is measured in liters in the metric system. Milliliter is a much smaller unit than the liter. We remember that the SI unit for volume is the cubic meter. However, we will focus mainly on the liter. This is a graduated cylinder. And this graduated cylinder, it measures 1,000 milliliters. Notice that 946 milliliters is equal to one quart and 1.06 quarts is equal to one liter. All of these are conversions that we can use when converting between one unit and another. Let me ask you a question. Would you use this graduated cylinder for measuring the dosage of medicine for a baby? What do you think you might use instead? Would it be a graduated cylinder? What would be the maximum volume on the instrument that you would use to measure medicine for a baby? Most likely a medicine dropper would be a better, uh, a better idea to measure medicine for a baby. And most often medicine droppers are generally about one milliliter. Notice that look at how small the difference is between each milliliter on this graduated cylinder. And this large graduated cylinder would not give us a precise measurement of such small volume. The cubic centimeter is numerically equivalent to one milliliter. So one centimeter cubed or one cc is equal to one milliliter. We can also say that 1000 centimeters cubed is equal to 1000 milliliters which is also the same as one liter. You will see the CC often in the medical field. When you take a look at this intravenous fluid, it's usually going to be in packages of 1,000 milliliters. However, when a dosage is being prescribed to a person, it will be measured in CCs. That's something for you to remember, that a CC is one milliliter. Do you think that milliliters or cubic centimeters would be useful for measuring the volume of water in a bathtub? What do you think would be better? Maybe that graduated cylinder that we were taking a look at previously.